Thank you for all those that spoke tonight. Um, we are moving on to our business portion of the agenda. Um, I started rather quickly and I neglected to welcome Dr. Snell. It's nice to have you officially join us. So our first item on the agenda is the approval of minutes from February 17th, February 18th, February 23rd, March 9th, May 11th, and June 8th. Do I have a motion? Our motion. Thank you. Do I have a second? I'll second. Okay, we will vote. Director Decker. I approve. Director Zavala. Oh. I approve. Director Bells. Approve. Director Smith. Approve. And I also approve. We're moving on to the consent agenda, and this is a reminder for our constituents here. Uh, we review all of the agenda items at our regular workshop, which is in the month prior, and you can find the audio and video for that online. So the consent agenda for instructional and administrative support services and um, E and F. Do I have a motion? So moved. Thank you. Do I have a second? I'll second. Thank you. Director Smith. Approved. Director Barrows. Approved. Director Savala. Approved. And Director Decker. Approved. And I also approved. Approved. So for a regular business portion of the agenda. Okay. We have a recommendation to purchase the second step social emotional learning curriculum package for all classrooms grades K through eight for the 2021-2022 school year. Dr. Snell. Yeah, I will um, share the screen here with you and for the audience members. Um, this is in response to the Washington State Social Emotional Learning Standards and um, this is a um, slide that shows the six standards that they have self awareness, self management, self efficacy, social awareness, social management, and social engagement. Um, over the last, uh, since February, uh, the district has been involved in looking at different options for curriculum for social emotional learning. Um, over uh, again, you've done this in previous meetings, but for the benefit of this audience, I wanted to make sure that um, people understood the process of that. Um, last in um, June, you had a workshop that looked at um, uh, the recommendation from the board, and then this is the follow-up, excuse me, the recommendation from the district, and then this is the follow-up with the curriculum purchase for that. Do I have a motion? I'll make the motion. Do you have a second? I second. Okay, thank you. Are there any additional questions on this? Well, I think we've discussed this pretty thoroughly in yeah, we did discuss it thoroughly in June. Thank you. Yeah, I just I just wanted to add, um, as we had talked about in June, I really appreciate um, all of the background um, kind of collaboration and um, the process that the district went through to look at this curriculum. Um, you know, I have the advantage of knowing a lot of school counselors and was able to kind of get my own um, input when I knew this was the recommended curriculum. Um, and a lot of um, the school counselors that I know highly recommend this curriculum. It looks at a lot of different aspects of social emotional learning, um, you know, things like bicycle safety. I, I mentioned this during the workshop, things like wearing your helmet when you're, um, when you're riding your bike and just different um, aspects that, um, meet all of those standards. So I think it's a great, a great curriculum that the district is recommending. Thank you. Are there any more comments or questions? Okay, we will move to a vote. Director Decker. I approve. Director Savala. I approve. Director Barrows. I approve. And Director Smith. I approve. I also approve. Motion passes. Director Kyle. Director Spouse, sorry. Um, when we approved consent agenda, um, instructional administrative support services. Do we skip over the fiscal as well? Oh no, we do those all as one consent. Okay, I'm sorry. I yes. 
Thank you. The yeah. second item of regular business, we do re a recommendation to award bid number 2021-029, Kiggins Bowl Site Improvements for Track and Field. Yeah, on June 22nd, 2021, uh, two bids were received and opened for site improvements at Kiggins Bowl. Uh, site improvements include civil work associated with a new track and field for Discovery Middle School. Additional scope includes spectator bleachers, pathways and fencing, ADA parking lot and retaining walls. Colf Construction LLC, Vancouver, Washington submitted the lowest qualified bid. A uh, copy of the bid tabulation is attached. This is the second part of two phases to uh, renovate Kickens Bowl in the modernization project. Uh, this was a part of the 2017 bond program. District staff and consultants have reviewed the bids and it is recommended to accept the lowest qualified bid. Uh, this funding source will be from capital projects funds. And so the recommendation from staff is that the board of directors award bid number 2021-029 to Colf Construction LLC, Vancouver, Washington. Thank you. Do you have a motion? I'll motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. Okay. Thank you. We will move to a vote unless there's any questions. Okay. Director Smith. Approve. Director Barrows. Approve. Director Savala. Approve. Director Decker. Approve. And I also approve. Next, we have the recommendation to award bid number 2021-027, 800 building addition. Yeah, similarly, um, June 3rd, 2021, we received three bids um, uh, open for a six classroom addition at Columbia River High School. Uh, the addition will include a concession area and mechanical space on the lower level and six classrooms on the upper level. Robertson and Olson Construction Incorporated submitted the lowest qualified bid and uh, the bid tabulation is attached. Uh, the funding source uh, for this again is Capital Projects Fund. And again, this is a part of the 2017 bond program. Uh, the district recommendation, the staff recommendation, excuse me, is that the board of directors would award this bid to Robertson, Olson and Construction Incorporated uh, for the construction of the 800 wing concessions and classroom addition at Columbia River. Thank you for that. Do I have a motion? I'll motion. Thank you. Do I have a second? I'll second. Thank you. We'll move to a vote unless there's any questions. Okay. Director Decker? Approve. Director Zavala? Approve. Director Barrows? Approve. And Director Smith? Approve. Okay. And I also approve. Lastly, in our regular business, we have the recommendation to accept bid number 2018-027 for the Peter S. Ogden Elementary School replacement project. So back on June 26 in 2018, we awarded a contract to Robinson Construction uh, for the construction of a new replacement elementary school uh, on the current Peter S. Ogden school site. Uh, the project was also a part of the 2017 bond program. Uh, the project also qualified for state match assistance um, and eligible reimbursement funds uh, are in process from OSPI. Uh, the work has now been completed. The building is occupied and has been inspected by district staff and consultants and uh, recommended for final acceptance by the board. Uh, again, Capital Projects Fund uh, was the funding source and the recommendation then be that you accept the contract from Robinson Construction Company um, uh, for the construction of the replacement school um, in the final amount of $32,342,859.68 plus Washington state sales tax, um, which is to be held for 45 days per RCW 60.28.011. Um, Thank you very much. Do I have a motion? A motion. Do you have a second? I'll second. Thank you. Any questions? Just a comment that Ogden is a beautiful school. It's a beautiful school. <laughs> <laughs> Director Smith. Approve. Director Barrows. Approve. Director Savala. Approve. Director Decker. Approve. And I also approve. Tonight, we also have two superintendent reports. Um, the first is the fall 21, 2021 update. So I will pass it over to Dr. Snell. Thank you. Um, just a couple of items that I wanted to uh, talk about in my superintendent's report. Um, as you mentioned, um, this is my first board meeting, so I really appreciate the opportunity uh, to be here and serve um, this great district and great community. Um, I've spent a lot of time here um, and I'm glad to come back. 
Um, regarding that leadership transition, uh, the spring uh, I had the opportunity to meet at every school and talk with their principal, engage a lot of community groups and just do some listening. And so that was a awesome opportunity. Um, we also had at the end of the school year, a staff connect. Um, Zoom, although it's not our preferred choice, does allow us to engage a lot of people at the same time. And so we had an all staff meeting uh, to talk about uh, the year that had passed and our hopes for the year in the future. Um, so that was a great opportunity. I want to speak a little about student equity. That was a popular comment tonight. And then a little about fall guidance, um, which is uh, we received a lot of comments tonight as well. Um, student equity uh, from uh, the district standpoint and what I've heard um, as I've done my tour is really about these kinds of items uh, that we want to make sure that each of our students have their unique needs met. And we treat them fairly. Uh, we want to make sure that everyone has the opportunity to succeed in our district. I think all of us want that, and we heard that tonight. Uh, we want to provide schools that are safe and accepting of each person and their culture. Uh, we want to make sure that we give students the tools that they um, need to thrive and work with people from all over the world. Uh, we definitely want to treat our students to treat each other um, with respect and, and know each other. Um, we want to make sure that students are growing um, their own confidence and uh, self-esteem in healthy ways. And we definitely want to make sure that our students leave us with good critical thinking skills. And so that's the focus that I've heard. I know that over the course of the last um, couple of years, this board has adopted a resolution that was referenced earlier tonight. Um, and as we go through this year together, uh, we're going to refine um, what this could look like. And we appreciate the feedback that we receive from patrons of, about this and the student experience in general. Uh, we also acknowledge that this last year, uh, not just in Vancouver Public Schools, but it has been extremely challenging for our students across the country and across the world as we try to meet their needs and try to understand how to navigate this pandemic. Uh, the other thing that was brought up tonight that um, I thought might come up a little bit is related to some of the new state requirements from the state. Um, and there is a bill that was signed into law related to staff training. Um, it is focused on student equity and the outcomes that we talked about previously in the um, previous slide. Uh, it does not include critical race theory or um, another one that didn't come up tonight that I've heard is the 1619 project. Um, and so um, a gentleman also commented this evening about having that training available. And we as a district will um, produce the agenda and outcomes of those trainings so that our public can see what we're working on to support our teachers with. Um, also, this district um, was the... Um, um, uh, the Attorney General um, uh, weighed in on practices that were happening in our system and um, identified gaps in our system. And so um, we had an audit that was conducted. And so we um, have an obligation to respond to that audit. And so um, that is available on the website now, overview for um, patrons to look at and to comment on. Um, and so that will be a part of our work moving forward this year as well, is to look at those gaps that we have um, and do our best to ensure that each student um, can be successful uh, when they leave Vancouver Public Schools. Um, related to fall guidance, uh, the CDC did just release on July 9th updated guidance, and so we've all been kind of waiting for that. And the next question is, will our Department of Health respond to that guidance and um, change what they are mandating for us to do as a local school district? Um, we also did um, con conduct some surveys in the, towards the end of the school year to try to gauge parents um, and families' preferences around what um, options they would like for their students in the fall. And we want to revisit that at the beginning of August. Uh, our return rate, uh, we'd like it to be a little higher if possible so that we can try to staff accordingly um, to align to uh, families' desires and make sure we have adequate staff there. So um, more information to come about that. So the CDC guidance, I know this slide has a lot of detail and uh, I provide it more for follow-up reference rather than being able to read everything today. It's straight from their website. Um, I did bold the third um, uh, item because that is related to masks and it is the, the one area that has some different differences between what the state of Washington is currently mandating and what the CDC recommendations are. And so right now, if you go to the CDC site, you'll see that they are um, allowing uh, masks out, uh, not, not requiring masks outside, 
And then talking about masks indoors when people are not um, fully vaccinated. And so that's different than what our state is currently saying. And so we're wanting to pay attention to that and see what the new Department of Health guidance says. Um, uh, the, the, the other, I, I continued this more of a reference and the CDC website is linked here so people can look at this, but these guidance are largely rather similar to what our current state of Washington uh, Department of Health guidance is. So I don't anticipate a lot of changes on that front. So what did our Department of Health guidance say? The last time they updated us was back on um, May 13th was the original and then they followed up on May 24th and then they just recently um, on July 6th, released something about not requiring uh, face coverings in um, outdoor settings. And so um, they also referenced in that guidance that they do plan to update um, uh, their guidance in consideration of whatever the CDC releases. And so the rumor is, is that we would receive that next week, but that is all rumor and speculation at this point. So I don't have anybody really with any authority telling me that, but they've had work groups in place and are um, trying to process what does this mean for Washington. Um, currently, if they don't make any um, changes, then we as a local school district are um, mandatory um, on these bold um, uh, mitigation strategies. And one of those is masks and obviously lots of energy and feeling around that. And, um, and so we'll want to pay attention to where do we have flexibility and um, what does that look like for this district and what does it look like for our state? I tried to just like overlay where some of these decisions um, are landing right now in our state. Um, one of the areas is a remote learning option, and um, the state has told us that we are not mandated to provide a remote learning option, um, that that's a local decision, and you as a board have endorsed um, moving forward with that and providing a full remote learning option. So that is something that will be in place for families if they want that in the fall. Um, face coverings right now in the state of Washington are a state mandate. Um, and so if there's energy around that, I would encourage people, whatever way you feel, is to reach out to your state elected officials to um, challenge them around this. Um, so we're fucking here now. Yeah. We talk to them. Thank you, Sorry. sir. Yeah. Um, you can set the rules here. No, we can't. The next topic yes, is can. COVID. Can. Uh, the next topic is COVID cases and close contacts. And the state currently are... Um, dictating those reporting requirements. Um, the distancing requirements, which is the three to six feet um, distance that was put into place last year, um, there's flexibility around that at the local level um, that uh, it should not prevent us from providing a full-time in-person experience for students. And so we're moving forward with that um, five days a week. And then finally, the um, other area that has energy is contact tracing. Um, and right now, the state defines the rules around how we identify close contacts and then subsequent uh, quarantines. And so that's just an overview of right now. If you look at the um, guidance and the recommendations and the requirements, where they land. Um, and I understand some people feel um, that they shouldn't land in that way, but that's how it lands right now in Washington. Um, finally, and I'll just move to the next item, if that's okay, um, President Sproul. Um, uh, just an overview of the budget and the process that we have and that the district goes through. And obviously I'm joining now in July, um, but just a, a timeline back in uh, December is when the governor uh, releases his proposed budget and then the legislative session starts. And um, as districts, we pay attention to that legislative session, um, try to see if there's an impact uh, to our state budget or our school district's budget from the state level. Um, this year, the House and Senate proposed budgets um, were adopted in a timely manner, which is really helpful for us in school districts, uh, because our timeline for staffing the schools is in the end of May, beginning of June. Um, and so to have that information before we have to do that process is really helpful. Um, and then there's a series of board meetings and engagements um, that I want to draw to um, your attention. Uh, recently, we posted on the website um, the draft budget. Um, and that's up in uh, available to people so they can review that. Um, and then on August 10th, we'll have a public hearing about that draft budget and uh, a potential adoption of the 21-22 final budget um, by you as a board. And so in between that time, we'll be preparing you with details about what that budget looks like and answering any questions that you might have. 
Um, that's the report that I have tonight, um, and we'll look forward to updating you in August. Thank you so much for that thorough report. Um, lastly, on the agenda, there are attached financial statements that you can review online. Um, but just as a reminder for our public, we, our next meeting is on August 10th, where we will do the budget um, along with a regular business meeting. But with that, our meeting is adjourned.